What is going on, people of YouTube? Welcome back to another tutorial on how to improve your game in the Golf Club 2019. Today's topic is going to be focused on approach shots. If you didn't see the last video in the series, which was a focus on driving, that will be on the screen now for you to click. Alright, so we have a lot to cover today, so let's just dive right into it. So just like our previous video on driving, we have the exact same goal in mind when going for greens and regulation. We want to try and hit at least 90% in every single round that we play. Once again, I can almost guarantee that if you're hitting 90% in greens and regulation for every single round that you play, your scores are going to improve dramatically. Approach shots are probably the most difficult shots to master in the entire game. I would even argue that approach shots are more difficult than putting, because at least with putting there are only a few variables that you need to take into account. However, with every single approach shot, there are at least five variables you need to pay attention to if you want to start knocking down flag sticks. Just like the last video, here's another acronym to help you remember these variables. Swell for stance, wind, elevation, landing area, and lie. What I hope to accomplish in this video is to give you a starting point for each one of these variables so that you can begin to master them as you play. Now, I could go extremely in depth for each one of them, and this video would probably end up being 30 minutes to an hour long. But instead of dumping all the information on you at once, I think it's best to give you a starting point and then it's up to you to put in the work and perfect it. Now, before we even begin our round, one of the most important things we can do to help equip ourselves to hitting close approaches is to look at the course conditions. More specifically, since this video is about approach shots, the two that we're going to be paying attention to today are greens and green speed. If the greens are soft, we can confidently land close to the pins on our approach shots. If they're medium, we start to have to play for a little bit of a bounce. If they're firm, we have to play for a much bigger bounce. And if they're very firm, we have to play for multiple bounces. As for green speeds, the faster the greens are, the more the rollout's going to be. Okay, so we've taken a look at our course conditions, so without further ado, let's start throwing some darts. Okay, here we are at the Malibu Club, which is the PGA course this week. This is probably the most challenging course we've played this season on the PGA, and the reason for that is the extremely difficult approach shots. It also has a ton of perfect examples that take into account the five variables we mentioned earlier using our acronym SWELL. Okay, so here we are at our first hole approach shot. And one of the first things that I always do is I look at my stance and I look at the lie. So we've knocked out two out of the five of our variables in our SWELL acronym. So holding down the left trigger, I can see my stance and it looks like it's going to be quite a push stance since there's a lot of red lines going from left to right. And then we look at our lie we can see that there's a 98% chance to 100% chance. So we don't really have to worry about losing too much distance there. We can pretty much guarantee that it's going to be around 108 yards of carry. Next thing we want to do is we want to hit Y and start to look at our landing area. So once we've zoomed in, I actually start to zoom in a little bit further so I can see what the green looks like and how this ball is going to behave once it lands. So looking at this green, I see that there's not really too much that this ball is going to do. There's a little bit of right to left lines. There's actually a little bit of left to right lines on both sides of this pin. So if we land near this pin, it shouldn't really go too much, too far away. But both sides are actually funner, funneling away from the pin. So we want to get this as close as possible. Okay, so here we go into my personal preference of how I play the game. And because I mentioned in the last video, I play a push on all of my shots. One of the first things that I do is I center up my shot. What I mean by that is I take my circle and I put the, the right edge of the circle at the pin because that's where my push, if there was no wind and I had a completely flat lie, that would be the direction that my ball should be going with a perfect push. So the next thing we want to take a look at is the elevation. So if we remember from the last video, one foot of elevation equals one foot of distance. So if we're one foot up, we're going to be losing one foot of distance or if we're one foot down, we're going to be gaining one foot of distance. So eight feet up, we're going to be losing eight feet of distance, which is almost three yards. So losing almost three yards, this ball is going to carry about 105, just if it was a flat lie. But if we go back again, you can actually see that we're a little on a downslope as well, which is actually going to add a little bit of distance once this comes off the club face. The more downslope you are, the further the ball is going to travel once you hit it. So this is a, this is a yellow line, so it's going to probably add about two to three yards. If it's red, it's probably going to add at max around five yards extra of distance if you're severely downsloped. And then upsloped, it's the same difference except taking off distance. So being on this downslope and being up eight feet, that's probably going to cancel each other out. So we really don't have to worry about the difference in elevation with this downslope. 
So the last thing we want to do is line up the shot based on the wind and our side slope lie, which is the most challenging thing to do and to master. So for me, I play one mile per hour of wind to one yard of distance in direction. So what do I mean by that? If we take a look at this wind, which is 12 miles per hour, not directly at our back and not direct directly right to left, it's actually in between. So what I do is I cut this in half and adjust it for the side and at our back. So it'd be six miles an hour at our back and six miles an hour right to left. So using what I said before, one mile per hour is one yard of distance. So six miles per hour right to left, I have to adjust six yards on the other side. So if you want to get really exact, you can use these boxes on the green because they're exactly one yard. What I do is I usually just use the circle and I say that the circle is about 10 yards and then I'm just playing middle of the circle is five yards and so on. Obviously some of the clubs have bigger circles, so you have to adjust for that. But if we're talking about the wedges, that's all around 10 yards and that's what I play it like. So with our six yards of distance that we need to adjust for, if I was on a perfectly flat lie, I would adjust this pretty much almost back to the center. So with my push and with the six miles per hour right to left, I've now adjusted and this is this is how I would play it. But if we remember our stance, we're actually on a side slope left to right. So we know that this ball is going to come off the club face as a push to the right. And using the same logic that we used before for the down slope and the up slope, we can probably get a max of about five yards of distance in direction, as well as the same thing if we were on a down slope, we would get five yards extra of distance. So this is probably gonna be around three to four yards. I wouldn't say this is like a max left to right push. It is red, but it's not, it can get a lot worse of a side hill lie. So I would say it's about three to four yards of distance that we need to adjust for. So if we zoom back in, adjusting for that, we, we now have to go back to our left. So there we are, we've adjusted about four extra yards just from the push lie. Now we've taken pretty much everything into account other than where exactly we believe this ball is going to land. So as I said before, we canceled out the distance from the elevation and the down slope. So if all things considered, we're probably gonna be landing about 108, except we haven't factored in the six miles per hour at our back yet. This is where we actually wanna judge where the ball is going to land in relation to the hole. So with six miles per hour at our back, we're gonna be gaining about six yards of distance. So obviously we don't wanna be landing way past the hole here. So to adjust for this, we have to be playing with our loft box. The loft box is a very, very difficult thing to master. And it's completely different for pretty much every single club. I mean, the wedges are very similar to each other, but once you start getting out of the wedges and you're going down to your mid irons, to your low irons, they all play very differently and they obviously get smaller. So if I go to like my two iron, for example, I don't have a big loft box for the two iron, but for the wedges, I have a ton of adjustment that I can make. So this is gonna take a lot of tinkering in your own time. And I'm not gonna to get too in depth on this because I do wanna keep this video short and I kinda of just wanna walk you through every single aspect of one approach shot and you can really practice each one of these things in your game. So for this shot, I want to be taking off about seven yards of distance, because if we calculated correctly, it's going to be landing still around 108, and we'd actually, that's still one yard past the pin. So I want to take off the six miles per hour extra of distance and also another yard, because these greens right now are on moderate. I know that we looked at a different set of course conditions. These greens are moderate. So it's not going to be bouncing too far, and we can assume that it's going to sit down relatively fast, as the greens are also not that fast. They're, they're on moderate speeds. So to take off about seven yards of distance, I'm probably gonna play this about a little bit more than halfway between the starting point of the loft box and the very top of the loft box. So I'm gonna adjust this. And like I said, this is gonna take a lot of practice to get used to how much distance this takes off for various clubs. But for me, I'm, I'm, I played this game for almost 400 hours now, so I kind of have an idea of what these are gonna do. So that's the last step. We've got everything taken into account. Let's just run through it one more time. We went through our stance. We went through our lie. We went through our landing area to zoom in on the green. We looked at our elevation and we looked at the wind. And we've also, we've adjusted for the distance with our loft box. So with all that into account, let's, let's take a swing and see how close we can get.
So that's a pretty great shot. I mean, it's obviously not... A, I wouldn't call it a dart. I mean, I, I mean, actually I would. It's about seven feet, so that's still a pretty good dart. Um, it could have been a little bit closer. Um, I could have adjusted the loft box a little bit higher to take off a little bit more distance. But for the most part, I think that's a extremely solid, solid shot. If we're inside of 10 feet, we should be able to make that putt for birdie. And there's our bird. So as I said before, approach shots are definitely one of the most difficult parts of this game for you to master. It's going to take a lot of practice for each individual variable in every single approach shot. So you're not gonna be going out there hitting darts right off the bat after you watch this video. It's going to take practice. I wasn't even able to go in depth on specific clubs, their rollouts. There's so many more things that you're going to have to practice on your own time. Because if I was to go through every single one of the clubs, this video would be probably an hour long. But this gives you a basic idea of all of the different variables that you need to take into account for every single approach shot that you hit. It's now up to you to go out there and practice. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please leave it a like. That really helps out the video. Maybe share it around with your friends if they're also enjoying the golf club. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and ring that notification bell for the next one of the videos in this series. Um, if you didn't see the driving video, which was my previous one, um, that should be up on the screen now for you to click if you want to go and watch that now. Be sure to follow me on Twitch. That link is in the description, as well as my Twitter link if you want to follow me on there. All right, guys, I love you. I will catch you later in the next video. I'm out. Peace.